it's time to look at the 0.2.1.0 update. Now that it's been out for a couple weeks and we've had time to get a feel for it and check out the ups and downs, let's check it out. There is a lot of updates, way too many to test in one video, so for this we'll pick the ones that have been affecting me the most in day-by-day -day play. And from that list we'll use these 11, and in no particular order we will check them out and keep the score between the devs and the Kraken God. Let's go. 0 0.2.1.0 Updates The Good, The Bad, and the ugly. First we're going to do a quick little bit of setup for later tests and at the same time we're going to see if the lights are indeed fixed on first flight. I'd skipped using the lights that didn't work on the first launch for so long I've even forgotten that they were there. But anywho, we are just placing a craft with shielded docking ports as they've had some glitches and to aid in docking we're gonna have some lights as well. And yeah, there has been some oddities. And now that we are in orbit, we can test out our lights and see if they work. And indeed they do, and on the first time. Now that they work, let's set some settings and make them a nice little amber color and ooh, pitch angle. We'll come back to that. But on first test with lights, first point goes to the KSP devs. So now that the lights work, let's check out some of the settings that we have for them. And we're just gonna go through first with the bar lights and they are just basic standard lights. We have our first little pot light, our strobe lights. The colors are all settable. We have our third type of light. Now I had recorded this before the launch of the space station test, so I did notice that there was actually all these extra little angle controls in them, and I noticed it on these little pot lights. They have this lovely little rotation angle and a pitch angle. So yeah, it, it's gonna be really nice for building rovers when we actually need to point lights a little bit better, not being just stuck with the basic angle that you positioned your lights. So this is gonna be really nice in later gameplay. So cool beans. Thank you very much for getting the lights working, guys. The only comment I have is it would be nice to have the two axis rotation on all three of those lights. And back to testing the update with re-entry heating. Inside the payload fairing is a satellite with parts I would usually lose on ascent due to heating. Here we are going to go low and fast to get as much heat as we can as quick as we can for this test. With heat warnings, let's pause and take a peek. The satellite looked all good, it's just heat warnings on the fins and the payload fairing. But it is not cooking the parts inside the payload fairing anymore. So let's carry on and see how it goes. And my rocket exploded. Oh no, it's back there. Um, hmm. Well, I still have my decoupler ring. Okay, yeah, when the dome gave away, there's the base plate that I was attached to, and when that gave away, it threw me clear of the craft. Okay, I got it. Except, um, why am I speeding up? Uh, I should be slowing down with drag. I'm speeding up. My rocket, I had the engines off, so it's not like I'm getting a phantom push from it. Um... Well, um, well, we'll call that a draw. One to uh, the devs for fixing the overheating, and one to the Kraken God. Good game. We're killing the Kraken. That is a hell of a claim to make. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. No. Uh-uh. No. 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 And just to make sure that the heating is not cooking any stuff behind a heat shield or anything strange, we are going to take this rather fragile rover and we are going to plow it pretty much straight down through the atmosphere and see if any parts fail due to heat from heat leaking through the heat shield. And so far so good. And yeah, I would call that a success also. So I will say that the heating effects are much better with this update. So yeah, overall I would call that heat balancing. Another one on the list is decouplers requiring a double tap. So for this test it is shotgun mic on the keyboard. And yes indeed, only a single tap now. And I want to check with the separation rings as they would not always separate for me, causing me to drag up a dead stage. The only way I could fix them was to go into time warp until they phased through each other. However, sometimes we just didn't have the time to do that within a maneuver, making them a part that pretty much I just refused to use since the release, kind of becoming a forgotten part, just like the light bulbs until those were fixed. 
Now they are one tap wonders and the separators also properly separate. So the separation rings are now usable. So with double tap decouplers fixed and the stack separators separating properly, that's two points to the devs. Next up is water impact. I have had quite a few crafts survive some insane impacts with the water and only just lose the heat shield or the first part. And now with my computer, it takes a moment, but everything is destroyed. A complete opposite of earlier landings in the water I had with Life of Kerbals, where I survived exact same speed into the water, not a problem. So point goes to KSP devs. For this round, to test out the map icon size, I've sent a bunch of capsules up into orbit and let them disperse. And as we can see, they come around the planet and they start out small and they get larger. Once they get to a certain point, they just cap out and they stop growing anymore. This is a definite improvement and stops the icons from obscuring your view. With that test, another one goes to the KSP devs. Now for vessel loading. Originally they were coming in like this where everything was a big pink object. Now we get this for a single frame or so. I like the different parts for different base template objects, not all just pink and cubey. And after realizing this was my ship and what these parts were, actually I kind of like it. It's a cool way of loading in a vehicle rather than just pink cubes. The important thing is in placing objects, I have not been able to get them stuck as being pink cubes. Sometimes when you place apart, all the symmetry objects would come in as just a default cube. I have not been able to replicate that in building any of my ships yet, so we're going to count this one to the KSP devs. This next one is the skybox not rotating. This one was my biggest peeve right next to the lights. Um, Try to actually do a time warp to next morning without actually being able to see the stars rotate. It is a nightmare. You have no feedback as to how fast it's going. Here I can take a certain group of stars, start hitting time warp and see that they are moving and be like, no, we need to go a little bit faster. It's going to take all day to get to morning. So we'll mark that while we wait for morning to come through so we can watch our little hour hand going. Usually in launch, as soon as you get up to a certain altitude, all of a sudden the skybox would just pop into place. That's not happening anymore. It's staying where it is. We're actually seeing it in the right place on Kerbin. So now we are actually able to judge our time warps for getting to the morning and through the night and not blow way past day as well. Also, as we launch our universe is not spinning on us as soon as we get to a certain altitude and now here as soon as this bar starts getting close to the horizon i know that the sunrise is going to come up and there it is so the skybox properly rotates through the night with time and no longer pops when we launch this one for me as an amateur astronomer is a big one so it's a win to the ksp devs now there is one mentioned about an exception being thrown so that when we change our assembly in the VAB, the Delta V tools don't work. But I, I kind of came in and set it up for a test with my game and it's still not doing it. I'm not too sure if this is exactly what they meant, but I'm coming in and I'm switching my assembly between the different ships and it's not updating or ever showing me Delta V for the second ship that I made. It's almost like somewhere there's something hard coded in the code somewhere that says only calculate for the first ship. So anytime that we do anything that says recalculate the ship's Delta V, it's always recalculating ship A, even though we're looking at ship B. So ship B never actually calculates and just shows us a zero. That's my theory, I'm not too sure. But in this case, sorry guys, this round goes to the Kraken God. So the next couple of tests are going to be with our shielded docking port. So first things first, we got to get a test craft to our earlier launch test satellite. Well, actually not satellite, space station. So we are going to get ourselves in for a rendezvous. Our first attempt is going to be trying to dock with all the docking ports shielded and closed. And we're going to see if it still allows us to dock or if we actually bounce off now.
I really didn't do my due diligence building this craft because I didn't make sure that my RCS was centered. So this thing was kicking me all over the place, but I still managed to get the test done. We still managed to get in there. And in this case, we are just coming up and trying to bump our shielded plates. And in this case, actually, we are bouncing off each other. So that one's a win for the KSP devs. So now all we need to do just for the next test is we need to actually get ourselves docked because the next test is that sometimes whenever we would leave our craft and reload back into it, we would not be able to undock a shielded docking port. So coming into the last little bit and there we are docked. So let's reload and come back. Now we have fully left our combined state space station. We have done a few different tests and things, and now we are coming back to it to control it. And we are going to see if we were able to actually undock. First off, I would like to bring in this horrible loading that happens <laughs> when loading my craft in space. Every single piece as it loads, it steps along in space kind of laying out each piece in like a bread trail and then brings everything all back together at the last moment. And for the most part that works, I've had in a couple cases where I've lost parts of my craft due to the last moment when everything snaps back into final place, it registers a collision and destroys parts of my craft. So I don't know if they need to say that when loading into your craft for the first few seconds you're not actually going to get any collisions between parts i don't know something but this loading thing it's a little bit hit or miss for me but on to our actual test and yeah we are able to disengage and, de and undock so this one goes to the ksp devs now let's take a look at their revamp to the map for intersections and the coloring and theming of their UI. I actually kind of really like it. I like the slightly orange color, the two different colors for the two different intersects. I do also like that the craft that you are set to target, it shows up orange as well. It's not blue like everything else. So that's a really nice little touch there. And I really do appreciate that. There is, however, still an issue that if I hover over top of my craft, bring open the menu and create a maneuver node, its info gets locked up and there's nothing I can do to get rid of it. And it covers over top of stuff and gets really, really distracting. And in some cases makes it really hard to do things. So this round, unfortunately, is a tie. Now in the overview image, there was a comment about fixing orbital decay again. So I guess we're going to test orbital decay again. So same graft as before, same scenario as the video from Scott Manley broke my KSP where I came up with the sliposphere. We're going to bring this craft in really shallow. We're going to try and get it in at 69 kilometers and 800 meters. So that's in between that 400 meter top zone that seems to like to accelerate us. And we're going to see how this goes. Now this one, we are going to take a little bit to go through it, but I was really diligent in not wanting to time warp all the time to get this to work. For the most part, I was pretty much here at real time going through this for most of it until I re-verified with myself that time warp did not cause this issue. So the first thing to bring in at the moment is right now we are at just under 69, just under 70 kilometers for our periapsis and apoapsis. So we are within the atmosphere on both sides. As we are coming around get our info back up here what i've been doing is i just keep watching my peri apps and i've been seeing if that's adding and it's still adding even though i went into time warp and it was adding really quick and took it back off then thinking well then oh there it just went up from 44 to 45. um our apple apps 
This one on the back side, every once in a while, I'll come in and watch it. I'm more basically just watching the opposite side of where the craft is. That seems to be where the energy gets pushed to. So as we are going along and we're getting closer to our Perry apps, we're actually going to start caring more about what's happening at our Apple apps. Um, and right now that is 69, 990 or 998, 990, 991. So now that's starting to go up because now we are on the opposite side of the planet from it. And our Perry apps, we're going to notice that that's actually going to start experiencing a loss in altitude or impacts from drag so we are now at 840 839 so that is actually coming down and our apple apps should get thrown outside of the atmosphere and go above 70 kilometers so we're just waiting for that to happen and there we are now we are at 70 kilometers even 70 kilometers and one meter. So we are now outside of the atmosphere. So we're still kind of really not degrading our orbit. Now I am at a little bit of a loss as to 100% exactly what's going on here. And I'm thinking it, it has to have something to do with the density of the atmosphere this high up. Some type of rounding error when adding with this small little bit of energy that's coming in from falling into the planet. So you're getting gravity pulling you in, that's speeding you up. But there's air there that should be also slowing you down. And somewhere in that, I think a rounding error is causing it to basically squash it to zero for any drag. But the gravity acceleration still gets applied. I highly doubt if I'm actually right, but just in watching this it kind of feels like what's happening so just for time's sake i'm gonna sit here and increase this time even more in editing just so that we can get through this next orbit fairly quick because once we come up out of the atmosphere we're going to come back around we're going to do another orbit and we're just going to see how high within just two orbits we're able to throw our apple apps so we came in at about 69 kilometers and 800-ish meters on our periaps, and we are still at 69 kilometers and 800-ish meters on our periaps. Our apwaps has gone from just shy of 70 kilometers to we're already at 70 and a half kilometers practically. So we have proven that the sliposphere is still there. So sorry guys, this one's got to go to the Kraken God because orbital decay still doesn't work. So now comes to the point we got to talk about the ugly. Something's happened with the maneuver window. It's giving back some really weird feedback. So here I am burning towards target, coming down, and boop, all of a sudden my burn goes all the way to max and starts gaining an orange bar. Although, by following its instructions, I do get to the right orbit in the end. In any case, anytime I'm doing any maneuver that has stages marked in the maneuver node, they move. They no longer stay put. They drift up and down. In some cases, like here, O2 just disappeared. So anytime that I have multiple stages and I burn, my O2 starts moving. It actually starts rising up. As my burn bar is coming down, it's coming up in the opposite direction. And this has caused me to become confused, to stage at the wrong point, to have my engine cut out and not know why and take me a moment to realize that I have to stage when it's telling me that I don't have to stage. And after we're through all this, we're going to do a quick little overlay here. And if we see where we burn to is actually where it was telling me that the O2 was going to need to be staged at. So why are the numbers moving around? And then all of a sudden it gives me a full red bar and then goes back to my burn bar. So I just totally ignore that bar now. The numbers don't do me any good. So the only thing I have is this little set of lights that's like from the drag track and out of this entire UI. This is the only bit that actually gives me any information at the moment. So, yeah, this one's going to the Kraken God. Sorry, guys. 
We're killing the crack. Except for this little introduced bug that I am experiencing with the maneuver display. I would have to say there is more positive than negative, but the one negative is a pretty big one. But I am hopeful that it'll be patched soon, and maybe in the next update, we'll get headlights on the Kerbals. So until the next update, have a good day, eh?